So today we're going to be talking business. The company that we're going to be interviewing today is very well known to the city of Lakebrook, really to the world at large. The epitome of the word innovation. The mission for Tesla is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. That begs the question, uh, why Lakebrook? Largest utility scale battery factory in, in all of North America on the mega factory here in the city of Lakebrook. Today we're going to be interviewing Tesla. Welcome back to another episode of All Things Lathrop, where we showcase the city of Lathrop, uh, where it's come from, uh, its progress today as it's continued to develop itself, um, really uh, for the benefit of its residents and also uh, the future plans that it has in store, um, again, to be a very prosperous city. Um, so today we're going to be talking business um, and uh, specifically the company that we're going to be inter interviewing today is uh, very well known to the city of Lathrop. Um, and really to the world at large. Um, a company whose founder is, um, I believe, really the epitome of the word innovation, um, designing products ranging from electric vehicles, um, solar rooftops, um, literally building tunnels, uh, sending rockets into space, and I believe the latest um, and perhaps the greatest uh, thing that um, the founder has developed is a computer brain um, interface called Neuralink. Um, and so today we're going to be interviewing Tesla and specifically, uh, we're going to be shining the spotlight on their mega factory here in the city of Lathrop. And so representing, uh, the, uh, Tesla brand today, um, in the Lathrop facility is a plant manager, uh, Javier, uh, Corral. Um, and so Javier, we're happy to have you here. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the introduction, Paul. I was super excited to have you here at the mega factory. Is this your first time at Tesla? This is the first time, yeah. Okay, so I'm glad you really enjoyed the tour the, across the mega factory and looking forward to have this meaningful conversation. As am, as am I. Um, so um, obviously you guys were very uh, generous on uh, letting us uh, get a tour and a peek, uh, a sneak preview, if you will, into some of the things that you guys are doing here um, at the mega factory. Tesla is obviously very well known um, for a number of different things, you know, even social media. I know Elon Musk has um, delved into that in the past couple of years, I believe, um, uh, purchasing Twitter, and then obviously it's now uh, called X. Um, but um, energy storage, um, and, you know, is what you guys do here. Um, again, I know you guys were kind enough to give us a tour here today, and so we know definitely a lot, a little bit more about what you guys do um, here at the Mega Factory here in Lathrop, but for our audience, uh, would you be able to kind of, I don't know, maybe in a couple of minutes or so, kind of just tell our audience what it is that you guys do here exactly at Lathrop? Absolutely. That's a great question. So uh, here at the Lathrop facility, we make the Mega Pack 2 XL. Um, this is basically a storage battery uh, that saves energy. So the way that I will describe the Mega Pack is a solution that that we are building is not only the product of the mega pack and, and basically having that energy storage it's all the solution that works around the mega pack uh, one of the main benefits of the mega pack is the product but as well how what are all the projects that we drive through the customers to ensure that it's easy to install it performs uh, at the expectation of the of the customer and making sure that as well we provide all the service that are required to maintain the, the mega pack, uh, which honestly the service that is required is minimum. It's more about monitoring and keeping that close loop with the customer experience. Because as we continue evolving as a, as a company, as a business, we always want to get that feedback loop from the customers to, to continue improving and innovating in this aspect. That's good. No, thank you for that. So um, one of the mega factory... Um, I know you guys have a, um, a facility that does, or at least in the same business, um, in Sparks, Nevada, correct? Mm -hmm. But this is obviously a mega of what you guys do over there in Nevada, right? 
Sona, obviously on a much larger scale. Um, what is the uh, capacity of the uh, the two XL, um, as you guys call it? What is the capacity um, in terms of power output? And then also, um, if you can describe kind of like in layman's terms, um, what does that power look like in terms of, for example, number of homes uh, that it would power up or, um, yeah, maybe even kind of give us a sense of that. Yeah, just to give you an idea, Liam. Before I go into the product, just to describe kind of like the size of the mega factory. The size of the mega factory, uh, along with the warehouse that we have, is the size of uh, 29 football fields. Uh, so that's basically the size of the, of the entire mega factory. Uh, the number of employees is equivalent to 33 football teams. So if you are familiar with the NFL, <laughs> and, and, and that is basically it's like having here working the... Uh, the NFL has 32 teams. It's like having the, the entire NFL working uh, with us at the Mega Factory. So definitely an exciting business to be on. Uh, in terms of the, uh, of the product or the Mega Pack to Excel, number one is the largest storage uh, battery that we can transport in the road. And that's basically why we define and design the size of the, of the Mega Factory. is basically the largest and heaviest that you can transport without breaking the the roads. Um, number two is in terms of like powering, uh, one mega pack is equivalent to 3.99 megawatt hours. Uh, so this will be equivalent to power around, I mean, around 100, if I take an average, around 134 homes uh, for 24 hours. Uh, obviously it's energy storage. So we we work really closely with different sources of, of, of renewable energies. So Mainly, we are capturing the energy to ensure that it's not lost during the hours that there is no sun or wind, and basically shifting that energy into the peak hours that are happening on the night to enable that transition to clean energy. So, one one mega pack, you said, if I heard you correctly, would power 134 homes. That's correct. For 24 hours. For 24 hours, and that's just one. Yeah, it's just one mega pack. Wow, that's pretty good. So, when did um, production of your mega uh, mega factory here? Um, and later begin. Um, it began in 2021. That's basically when we break ground. Uh, there were a, like obviously it's the construction pace. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but I mean you grew up in Ladrop. Yeah, yeah. This warehouse uh, before used to be a J.C. Penny warehouse. Uh, it was acquired by, by Tesla, and now we basically transform this warehouse into the largest uh, storage energy factory in in North America. Uh, so it's a, like for the city of Laidrop, I think one of the things that we should be really proud as a, as a community is like, how are we evolving as from, from like consumism and retail to actually uh, generate clean energy and enable that transition? What was the, do you know what the timeline was? Uh, you know, once you guys stepped foot um, or basically broke ground um, transitioning what the former use was into actual operations for the mega factory? Absolutely. So it took us around four to six months to get into production of the first the inverter line um, mm -hmm. and then full completion of the mega pack. It took like uh, almost a, a year uh, because that means that we're basically in this factory, we're not just assembling the mega pack, it's basically we're building the mega pack from the ground up. It's, it's, you have your boiling white operation, you have your powder coat operation, you have the assembly lines, the inverter line, the battery module line. So it's basically we're building the entire, it's the first time that we're building the entire uh, product in a, in a single factory. And we're doing it at a really large scale. So it requires some time to ramp. But if you compare this to the industry in general, uh, I'll, I feel very confident to say that this has been uh, probably one of the weakest and the smoothest ramp in Tesla as a company. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, 12, uh, up to 12 months. I mean, that's, that is definitely very quick. Um, do you recall um, what major impediments there were um, in really taking over the facility and getting it to um, operational capacity um, or oper operational use, I should say? I won't call it impediments or obstacle. I will call it this part of the normal transition of, of building a factory. So the first thing was like, how do we ensure that we have uh, all the right 
power uh, for all the automation and new equipment that we were bringing into the factory, ensuring that we have all the facilities like uh, CDA uh, installed, chill water, drops, H vacuum system, basically everything that encompasses building a, a factory of this magnitude. Uh, second is obviously like now that you have the, the, the building is like how do you bring the equipment install it and validate the equipment one of the very particular challenges of the mega factory is that this is the only factory around the world that is building this product so this is no easy like I always kind of like preach this to, to my team and, and encourage them it's like uh, Probably around only 1% of the world has the opportunity to work in a company like Tesla. Yeah. And then out of that 1%, you are the only ones that are building the mega pack product. Because this is the only factory in the world for Tesla that is building this product. So there is not that much of a benchmark, uh, like lesson learned from the past. So what is extremely important when you kind of like expose yourself to these type of situations is like, Number one, have a very cohesive team that is super dynamic, open to change and adapt. But what is more important, they have the resilience to overcome obstacles. Um, normally, the issues that we face uh, in the production lines are things that a lot of times we have never seen in the past. Uh, we have top engineers. Uh, I will say like by far in my entire career, I'm working with the greatest engineers in the world. Uh, a lot of cross-functional teams that partner together, but a lot of times we're facing issues that we have never seen in the past. And it requires a cross-functional team to rally together, to basically look at the things at the lower level of detail, learn from uh, like basically trial and piloting things, as in, and basically partner with the right uh, vendors and, and, and the right teams to ensure that we can create a, not only a safe product, but with the highest quality and being able to scale it for to provide it around the world. Well, that's good. Uh, there's certainly a lot, um, a lot you said, and I was taking some notes on some of the things that um, I think we'll definitely cover later on. Um, open to chains and uh, uh, being resilient. That's uh, definitely two things that um, sometimes can be rare. So that's that's good. I definitely agree because I I can I can attest to that. You know, going going through that. Uh, um, you have to be open to change if you're going to grow, number one, but also uh, being resilient. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, kind of just uh, continuing on on the, I guess, a little more of the technical side of the mega pack. Um, so, um, I guess specifically on the uh, customer base, uh, you would mentioned, I think, um, offline before we started the podcast, um, the customer base. Um, maybe speak to the customer base and also... Uh, that you guys provide, and then also the number of uh, mega packs or even projects uh, that you guys have already um, um, gotten out of the pipeline and installed across the world. So we we are currently, I think, on the on the presentation I show you a map yeah. where we were kind of like showing all the different areas that where the mega pack has been installed. So I'll start with a, a little bit of a history on the on the mega pack to Excel. <laughs> The first project uh, that we installed and that the team is super proud to to basically rally around that project was uh, the getting a project in Oahu, Hawaii. So the most important thing is like the mission in which we are all, all working on. So the mission for Tesla is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. So... The, what is unique and, and really rewarding around that project is like once uh, the team partner uh, with Renewable Energy and the Mega Pack uh, on Oahu, Hawaii, they were able to shut down the last coal uh, plant in, in Hawaii. So basically, it enabled the entire transition uh, to the use of, of the Mega Packs and ensure that we have clean energy. If you look at the kind of like a, economics of that is basically like you need to transport coal to Hawaii. So what are all the logistics to ship that into Hawaii? What are all the costs associated uh, yeah. with that? Like burning uh, basically the, all the processes that require to, to use coal to produce energy. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're basically switching all of that to use clean energy to storage in megapacks to be able to satisfy the energy that is required on, on, on Hawaii. So that's just a, an example of, of some of the cool projects that we have. Um, but that doesn't mean that we don't have, we have, we have customers that are basically uh, not, not only like getting energy from renewable sources, we're customers that are using the mega pack for uh, the requirement needs of keeping that storage just to sustain some equipment that they want to ensure that if power goes down, they are able to run it and they attach that to the grid. Um, yeah. We are presence in all like Europe, uh, Asia Pacific, Africa, North America, South America. So this is basically expanding uh, around the world and, and it just feels great to be part of this uh, great opportunity to see how that idea and, and that basically factory that was empty producing one mega pack in, in a week is able to scale at this ramp. And, and what I like, this is, this is public. You can look at, at the earnings calls in Tesla, but uh, last year we were able to deploy 14.5 gigawatt hours, which is basically 125 um, percent growth compared to 2022. And what I'm super proud of the mega factory team is like, it's, it's hard to ramp up that high, but mm -hmm. when you are thinking in terms of like ramping to those levels while at the same time having 50% of your factory under construction, that is, that is just remarkable. And the only way you, you, you reference back resilience of the team, yeah. honestly, is, is ownership, is resilient, is earning the trust, is being like fully dedicated. And it requires a great mission to rally all around those ones. I think it's just not like something that is personal. It's like, like a dream that all the people that work here shares. Yeah. And I think like the unique thing is like when everybody shares the, dream, uh, the same dream, they typically come through. Mm -hmm. And I'm confident to say that Mega Factory is currently on track uh, to achieve the design capacity of 40 gigawatt hours. On, on that note, um, uh, so we're in actually March 1st today, right? 1st of March in, in 2024 already. The year's definitely going by really quick. So um, is there a projected timeline in which uh, the mega factory here in Lathrop will reach capacity of 40 gigawatt hours? The goal is to reach out by the end of the year. End of the year. And our goal as a team is not only we're going to reach out 40 gigawatt hours, it's like we're going to do that while creating a world-class environment. And what we define as world-class environment is like, uh, there is one philosophy of management here and it's around Sparks. Uh, this is deployed across all Tesla and Sparks stands for safety, people, accuracy, rate, and cost. And they go in the, in the same priority, like in that order for priority. So first of all, we want to ensure that everybody comes and lives safe from work. Number two, we want to focus on the people, uh, engaging with them, not only like on creating a great environment for them to work, but as well developing them and enable their professional careers. Three, we want to produce quality product while doing that. And that doesn't mean like just producing 40 gigawatt hours of mega packs. It's basically producing a mega pack the right way uh, the first time that we are actually assembling that. Uh, then enable it the rate and making it cost effective um, for our customers. So while we're going over this entire transition yeah. and learning, it's important that we not only focus on the what, but why we're doing it and how to do it. Got it. So um, going back to uh, the customers, so um, uh, do, you, do you know the number of um, projects that you guys have done per date? Um, in terms of uh, the mega packs, uh, that information is available. Oh, okay. Um, normally, to give you some uh, background, like these projects are is is not we have teams and field services that are deployed around the world depending on the projects. Um, it's not like we have a tracker of like X amount of mega packs are, are getting installed per day because it's different than running a production line. Uh, normally it's like there is partnership between our customers and the particular countries and the regulations. 
in which they they are basically are mapping the entire project um, like like going over everything that takes uh, from from the time that you have the land to actually installing yeah. the project. And while they are going over those processes, different countries, different cities, the regulation change. So the projects can like, the time of the project right. can change based on that permitting. Um, but we always uh, have a kind of like a healthy pipeline of projects that, that we're working at the mega factory. I think is if you just basically walk the yard, yeah, uh, you can see like the amount of mega packs that are getting a stage there that are ready to chip. And, and each one of those mega packs, they have option codes that are tailored to a specific customers. So it's not like they are waiting there to be bought. Uh, they already have an owner and, and we're waiting for the, for the right time for their shipment. So by the time that they get there, we can quickly deploy them and, and, and the customer can start experience the benefits of installing a mega pack. Well, let me ask a question that um, I'm sure obviously you'll be able to answer as a plant manager. What is the production rate? of uh, the mega packs right now what does that look like obviously you guys are still wrapping up uh the goal like you said at the end of the year is to get to 40 gigawatt uh, hours uh what is the what is the uh production rate in terms of being able to put a mega pack together and out the door um is it a day an hour what does that what does that look like so we have different like you have the entire cycle time and you have that time but in terms of like for the purpose of answering your question in terms of magnitude as a site, uh, last year we were able to validate our capacity to 20 gigawatt hours. And like we, this is publicly disclosed, this, this facility was designed to drive 40 gigawatt hours. Uh, you have the opportunity to saw uh, some of the construction that is going on and, and the new assembly lines that, that are there. And, and basically we're on track to, to wrap up the year with uh, achieving the the ramp to the 40 gigawatt hours. Got it. Um, question on uh, material. I know, obviously, like, for example, we're in obviously 2024, well past the era of COVID that we all went through. Um, that started in 2020 and lasted really for a couple of years. Um, I guess, well, you guys uh, started in 2019, you said, right? No, 2021. 2021. Okay. So that was kind of really in the, mid, in the midst of uh, uh, COVID, really. So were there any, um, I guess, two-part questions. Were there any supply chain issues that you guys um, went through for the mega packs? And uh, kind of looking ahead, maybe in potential lessons learned, um, would that same, if roadblocks that you guys encountered, uh, would that be encountered again, would you say? Or have you guys navigated that process where even a disruption that the world uh, went through in terms of supply chain uh yeah, what what did you guys uh, experience during that time? So that's a that's a great question. I think uh, all the companies, not only like Tesla, learn a lot during the during the COVID times. And as you're aware, there was a a shortage of power electronics uh, globally, uh, mainly chips. So that is that is one of the issues that not just us but companies in general face. So. Uh, at the beginning of the program, uh, we we did experience some shortages of, of raw materials, but our supply chain team is like super solid team. They were able to quickly engage with the right uh, suppliers and, and build a strategy to overcome the shortage, uh, basically catch up on the ramp. And currently we have... I'm, I'm confident to say that we don't have any uh, raw materials uh, limitations for the, for the scale of the mega pack. Uh, we have learned to prepare for that. And, and Tesla, as part of one of their core principles, is like we're always like innovating and trying to be vertically integrated. So mega pack is not the exception for, for that philosophy. So we're constantly, number one, partnering with the right vendors and and ensuring that we procure the, the raw materials that have the right quality uh, to meet our customer expectations. And what I would say meet, to exceed the customer expectations and be that market leader. Uh, but not only that, it's like, how do we learn how to do it so we can have kind of like full control of our destiny? Got it. So you, you said the, uh, you mentioned the word vertical integrated. What does that mean exactly? Vertical integrated is basically you you are self-sufficient in terms of like your entire supply chain. 
So if if being vertically integrated um, will be like you are not relying on a particular supplier of, of raw materials. So there are uh, there were some news like about the the some of the uh, new factories or uh, new businesses that Tesla uh, is acquiring or is building or is designing or building from the ground up. So uh, we're always like a big confidence. Pe Megapack is a great example. Yeah, yeah. Like if you look at the prior version of the Megapack, we used to like kind of like outsource the, the enclosure of the Megapack. Okay. Now we're basically vertically integrated. We're building the enclosure from the ground up. Uh, here we are painting the the enclosure here we're ensuring that we take care of of all the processes and some of the benefits for that is is like you can control and ensure that you can leverage all of your mechanisms and processes uh, mm -hmm. that are in place to provide the right quality and have full control and autonomy of of your destiny so you mentioned um Kind of touching back, and that that's really good. I think that's definitely uh, key, obviously, to any company if they could basically make um, and design their own products. That way, there is no um, supply chain issues down the road. Like you know, like you said, a lot of companies uh, encountered during um, during the COVID area a couple of years. So, um, is that something that you guys are aiming toward, or you guys are almost already there in terms of being completely hundred percent? vertically integrated as you said hey, we're aiming towards uh, as as the technology changes as like products are constantly getting uh, innovation we're constantly learning uh, there is always like a uh, ways to improve so uh, part of our mission uh, that I mentioned is like how do we create a fast paced environment of innovation and continuous improvement so through those learning processes and cycles there is always like great ideas that come from our workforce from our engineers from from our designers and and basically as well as the industry is evolving like yeah. things are constantly changing so i would say like the the only the only constant is change especially in this type yeah. of business uh, that is that is basically just scaling so it's it's super important that We'll always stay humble that we are always open to learn and and we continue like chasing that uh, that continuous improvement mentality. As you um, um, stated earlier, the mission of Tesla um, is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, right? So on that note, how does the Lathor facility, the mega factory, if you will, um, accomplish that? That's a great question. So I, I often get, get asked this question, and, and that's something that I, as a leader of the mega factory, I'm constantly building in the DNA of every single person that works here. And, and this is the reason why, is I think you have worked for, a, for, a, for companies, I have worked for multiple companies. And the main reason why uh, people stay with a company or or in general in their life people stay committed to a particular goal or principle is because they have a clear vision and clear mission of what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. So accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy is that easy? No. So I often explain this to my to like my entire team in in, in four different aspects aspects. Number one is the cathedral model, which I will explain in a few. Number two is taking the driver's seat. Three, I show them a, a picture of the Mount Everest and we have a mount to climb. And number four is, is sustainable. And, and, and here's why. So the cathedral model is basically ensuring that every single employee that works here from the highest level to the associate that is closer to the product, they have a clear understanding of what are we trying to achieve and why we want to do it. Number two is like, what is their specific role on us achieving that goal? Number three is like, how do we measure it? Yeah. There is nothing uh, more uh, depressing, I'll say, that mm -hmm. working for something 
in a day and walking out and not knowing if you are winning or you're losing. It's true. That's good. Yeah. And, and number four is ensuring that we, we, we learn as a team and we create that learning organization that is going to continue driving improvements. And, and basically the cathedral model, it has some like purpose behind and it's basically uh, anyone can assembly a, a mega pack, right? Like the function of like doing a fastener, okay. adding some, some paint or seal, and if they are properly trained, they can do it. But our mission as leaders here in Tesla is to ensure that people are doing it because they strongly believe in that dream and in that mission. And how do I measure that? If you will ask, like, how, how, do, you, how do you know that, yeah. that your associates feel that way? There are multiple mechanisms, like having round tables, like uh, showing appreciation for our employees, having multiple ways to connect with them. Like every day, like this is not the type of factory that they won't see Javier. Like you were present there. Like yeah. people know me. I, I'm constantly walking the line. But we, the most important uh, key indicator here is like the impact that that is going to happen on their families. So the only homework that I leave when, I, when I'm teaching this uh, cathedral model to, to my associates, to our process technicians, to our managers, to our leaders is, um, I, my, my goal here is that when they go back home and they're having dinner with their families and they are, or they are gathering with their friends or their beloved ones, they can feel proud, chest up, yeah. And share, like, what are we trying to do? How their day was? What are the great things that we're doing at Tesla? Because that truly is what makes a change in the community. Like, we're talking about late drop here. Imagine yeah. two people can be doing the exact same task. Imagine the first picture of someone just, like, being, like, oh, I, I was just installing this fastener all day and not having that clear vision. What's going to be the impact on their family and their community? Towards the second person that knows how what they are doing connects to that end goal vision and how is that impacting their family how their childs are going to become uh, and with that we're starting some like family tours and getting involved uh, the entire community not only the employees that work here to uh, to basically create that engagement of of what we're doing is not like based on profit it's based because we're truly trying to change the world together the driver seat is is full ownership uh, despite of these issues a lot of them are cross-functional Mm -hmm. uh, every single leader at the mega factory they understand that they need to take the driver's seat on those issues and rally around the teams and focus on the solutions and work as a team on achieving them. And the Mount Everest reverts back to, is, is that easy? No. Can a lot of people do it? No. Yeah. And that is the reason why we're here, right? Because it's, it's not easy to do and it requires resilience uh, it requires dedication. It requires to enter the trust and all of those values to drive it. And we want to be those um, shepherds that are not only like focusing on what needs to happen, but how to do it and have the emotional uh, intelligence and, and the rational maturity to, to navigate the teams through, through those obstacles. Yeah. Um, and last but not least, this to be sustainable, right? Like, not to be, it doesn't have to be Javier dependent. Um, mm -hmm all dependent is because we're truly creating that culture where where is where it's sustainable for the long term because everybody is engaged on the process yeah to me it's, it definitely sounds like uh, you guys what you guys have done here at tesla i guess really a large is create an environment of true vested interest um that's powerful uh, that that really is um so uh kind of transitioning into um more biz the business side of things um you guys you already mentioned you guys are ra wrapping up to reach a capacity by the end of 2024 to um produce 40 gigawatt uh, hours of uh, for the mega packs um beyond that are you able to speak of any future um business plans uh, even for the the mega factory facility here in lathrop even looking beyond i'm not sure if you're privy to that um, but what does that look like if you're, yeah, if you're able to? So after, it, I wouldn't say after, it's basically the, the scope of this factory or the design, you, you saw like based on, on, on the space available and what we're trying to achieve is to basically get to those 40 gigawatt hours. Uh, once we get there, if there are ways to do more, we'll go for it. Uh, and we'll, that's part of the innovation. But uh, as we continue to grow and ramp up the, the mega pack business, uh, uh, 
you, you hear on the news, like there was announced the Shanghai factory uh, that, that is basically, they are, they are working on, on basically building that factory, which is going to produce mega packs to Excel as well, mm. mainly to serve the Asia Pacific, uh, uh, be, being geographically located uh, in an strategic area to serve, better serve that market. Um, and that's that's basically the next step for the for the mega factory. Uh, we're we're constantly partnering with them. At the end of the day, we're we're one big team. So yeah. uh, uh, normally we we have people from from the Shanghai factory coming to to the to the Tesla mega factory mm -hmm. and and learning the best practices. We share lesson learns. Uh, what are the things that if we will have the opportunity to design this this factory from the beginning? What are the things that we will change? Because at the end of the day, it's like uh, we want to ensure that the next mega factory is is basically better than the first mega factory, and and it's that learning curve and iteration mm -hmm. that will create that kind of like flywheel uh, to continue improving uh, not only the product but the processes uh, to scale. So, uh, uh, do you foresee a time in which there'll there'll be maybe a possible? Um, a mega pack 4XL or 5XL or something like that. It'll be it'll be great. <laughs> I mean, I show you the graph, right? Like it, yeah. it was a it was a when was the first? Um, there were like say six uh, six different models uh, yeah. or basically iterations of the of the product. Okay. Uh, and and as you can see, it's like the 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 beginning was like really small scale. Yeah, we were like. Taking the time, learning the process, learning the system, uh, piloting in, in in particular site, testing it, and as we continue improving, you can see that how that graph is exponentially growing, and and I'll be super excited to build a mega pack three XL, mega pack four XL, or or who knows, like ch n n names might change, but at the yeah. end of the day, it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's always something better. That's good. So um, transitioning topics now, um, as, as you have already mentioned, and it's obviously well known, uh, the mega factory here in, in the city of Lathrop is the largest utility scale battery factory, uh, battery factory in, in all of North America. Um, that begs the question, uh, why Lathrop? That is a great question. And, and I was not born and raised in Lathrop, but I was willing to move to Laidrop and there were different things that, that I appreciate as a person. But if you are asking from the business standpoint, uh, number one is a uh, is a employee experience. So something that we learned as we were running the, the Fremont factory is like a lot of the uh, associates and employees uh, process takes that work at the Fremont factory and most, most of the head a, a lot of High percentage of the headcount population is basically commuting from the San Joaquin Valley uh, to the Fre to the Fremont factory. So if you had a chance to make that commute towards the, the Bay Area during the mornings, it's like it's it's tough, right? Like you're gonna be you're gonna be stuck stuck in traffic for a for a few hours. Yeah. So uh, the first Tesla uh, facility in Laidrop was not the mega factory. We have service, we have castings that are right across the street. So they they created the factories there because it basically um, enabled better adoption from the from the associates and and they find out that it was a great market for for labor. Uh, they found like capable associates, people that was willing to learn, and and why not like reduce that commute. The second one is port proximity. Uh, we're shipping mega packs uh, all around the world, uh -huh. so we want to be uh, closer to the to the port. Three, since already this uh, Tesla ecosystem was built around around Lathrop, it makes sense to leverage all of those support teams that were already in the city. What was built around Lathrop? Sorry, uh, the ecosystem. So basically, you have we already had service, we already had Heartland. Uh, when you are thinking in terms of a scale, uh, you can leverage the same teams for like safety, mm. uh, workplace em uh, environment, uh, basically IT. You can you can literally leverage the entire campus to not only like, Got it. like 
have all the resources for one facility, but but a scale. Got it. So that was another factor. Uh, number four uh, is you're within driving driving distance from Deer Creek, uh, which is we have or or kind of like one of our uh, specific buildings where most of our designers for Megapack work, yeah. and they develop new technology there. So. As we go over those learning iterations, there is no better way to to test them than coming into the factory and basically quickly uh, do the do the trials, run the pilots, and and quickly learn to 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 close uh, to continue closing the the loop on on that plan, do check and adjust, mm. and and those kind of are are basically the main contributor factors. And the number fifth, and I think you. You, I was looking at one of your podcasts and, and you interview Shelby from the economic yeah. development. Yeah. Uh, I had had the opportunity to have some conversations with her. Uh, and she was right about that. Like, is the city of Latrop has been a great partner um, in terms of like, not only like enabling, enabling like uh, the right process to, to get the permits, but like doing it at a, at a fast pace as well. While, while basically we're following all the steps that require, but that that feedback loop is is getting is 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 like is is quickly, and they have been super helpful in terms of like enabling that process. Good. So the business environment was very good for you guys to get things up and running quickly yeah. as possible. And cool. and and normally like they they gave us advice on on things that they wanted to see to improve things around safety. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's like the city of Laidrop, uh, same as the, as the Tesla and the mega factory. They, they have great uh, engineers. They have subject matter experts. And, and I think what the synergy that is created around the city of Laidrop is like, everybody wants to do better and everybody wants to help the community and, and build something that, that is, that is really good for for the long term uh, in in Latrop and 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 I think just all of the teams are rallying together around that great mission as well. That's good. Well, that's good to hear. You know, certainly, that's good to hear in, in terms of you know, for example, other um, communities or other places. I'll just put it that way that may not be so um, receptive of business. Um, I'm glad to hear that Tesla, certainly Mega Factory, uh, specifically in Latrop, uh, was well received by the city of Latrop. So that's good. That's good. That's a really good experience. That's good. Um, and we hope that you guys continue to expand as much as possible. So, <laughs> so um, switching gears now in, in terms of jobs, I know you kind of touched on that briefly. Um, I think on the presentation that uh, that you presented before the, uh, before the start of this podcast, um, I believe it was in 2023 that uh, you highlighted that the, you guys basically doubled the number of employees here at the Mega Factory. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, so what was the catalyst to that happening? And yeah, maybe a touch on that first. So one of the, I, it's like, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because as a, as a leader of the, of the, of the mega factory, it's like one of the things that I feel the most proud about it is like seeing how we came from a small team to yeah. the size of the team that we have right now. And, and through that process is basically just like seeing how you are able to support the entire community uh, by doing something that you really like yeah. and, and having them like doing, doing it and having fun while, while doing it. So um, one of the, of the things that we're doing uh, for, to scale at, or, or one of the questions that I normally get from the customers mm-hmm. uh, as they are visiting the mega factory is say like, hey, while well, you're going into this ramp, similar to the supply supply, uh, chain. supply chain that you say, like you're running into shortages, yeah. one of the questions that they normally ask is like, hey, while well, you're going over this ramp, have you faced like labor constraints where you're not able to get the right labor or, or the or people with the right technical skills for what you're trying to do, yeah. right? And I'm proud to say that our recruiting team, by far, this has been the best recruiting team that I have had the opportunity to work in my career. Not a single time in last year when we doubled the business, a market a situation was one of the breaches that I got for constraining the labor. They were able to help us with the ramp. They always have a like a 
like a clean uh, pipeline or that a built pipeline to 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 basically provide the the right labor. And but what is more important is like it's it's a it's a work uh, it's a teamwork. Yeah. One is we need to have great forecast. Number two, we need to execute against that forecast. And number three, we need to have that planning proactively for the next six to nine months where, where all of those things marry so they can build the funnel. Sure. And something that is um, really important to mention about how has they been overcoming those or what are the different things that you see that they are doing it is, is here. So one of our, you, you walk our shop, so the, the first area is body white. And, and we have a large amount of, uh, uh, like a significant amount of welders that are working in, in that area. And that's a, that's a technical yeah. uh, skill, right? Like right, uh, right. that you need to learn. So one of the things that, that the recruiting team has done is uh, they, are, they are working with the local schools, with high schools and colleges oh. to partner with them to build the curriculum that is gonna need to work at Tesla. So we have two different programs currently. Is one is the STAR program. The STAR program? STAR. Pardon. The STAR program is a 16 weeks uh, program. And basically the, the program is mainly focusing on, on developing process technicians uh, into the robotics field. Mm. Um, okay. Tesla partnered with some colleges and, and they actually built a lab in, 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 that, in Diablo Valley College. Okay. Uh, so where they are basically doing some of these classes. Is that the only one that we're going to do? No. We, we are actually having a close partnership right now with uh, Delta College from San Joaquin Valley. Oh, that's good. Uh, we have another program that is a manufacturing uh, development program, also known as MDP. It's a 10-week program that is not only for internal uh, employees as well for external. Yeah. Uh, and basically, we it's a quick uh, accelerated immersion into the into the manufacturing mm. so we're not only partnering with colleges but with high schools around Manteca, Tracy, Latrop, uh, Turlock, Patterson like mm. oh, everything around this Stockton uh, everything around this this community to to basically build the community and how, and how do we do it it's not just like do we ask for interest? No, it's basically we go to the high schools we present uh, what is what is Tesla what is the mission we have some tours on the on the site where where students have the opportunity to see what are we what are we doing, and then we offer that curriculum in partnership with the profess uh, with the teachers and and with the with the people that own the educational programs to enable that. And for the and for the community, that's a great win because not only like they know what are they what are they getting themselves into, but as well, um, there's a it's a high probability that they're going to get a job at Tesla that will support them through through their professional career. Well, that's really good to hear. That's definitely news to my ears. I, I love hearing that. So is that something that's in progress or has there already been programs established, like, for example, in working with uh, local schools? It's already established. It's already established. Yeah, the, really actually, currently we have, uh, for the for the MDP program, mm -hmm. uh, we have, our current cohort is, has 24 students okay. um, that act, are actively working. Part of our workforce came out of that program as well, um, so that's that's currently in progress. And, and and what is more important is expanding, right? Because we yeah. we'll continue to grow. We're gonna change right, that right. 40 gigawatt hours, and we need uh, great people to get there. No, that would be, I guess, uh, sort of the icing on the cake in terms of that vertical vertical integration plan. Not only material, but also even the labor workforce would be taken locally. I mean, that's uh, that would be yeah, beautiful. That would be awesome. So that's really good to hear. Um, so what is the number of employees uh, that you guys have here at the Mega, uh, Mega Factory? Um, so we have around 1,800 employees. 1,800. And it's basically we're, we're constantly ramping as you got it. As you see that we're, we're bringing the new lines. Yeah. So how, uh, what do you foresee in terms of the uh, number of additional employees that you guys would have to bring on in order to reach that 40 gigawatt hour capacity? Um, I will be able to answer that question for you <laughs> okay. in probably like two to three months. Like, oh, okay, okay. And the, the main reason why is this sure. is like we're, we're validating new assembly lines and, and new it. production. Um, it's a and part but, of the iteration process. But it's part of the iteration process. Got it. Okay. Uh, another question on that same note in terms of jobs. 
Um, number one, are there current openings? You know, for example, our fellow Lathropians or even um, people in the San Joaquin uh, Valley or just region at large, are there current openings that you guys have at the Mega Factory? Okay. Every for the last, I'll, I mean, for the time that I've been in the Mega Factory, we have had openings. Uh, in, and it's not only at the associate level, it's associate level process technicians, um, maintenance technicians, engineers across like the different branches of, of, of engineering, a uh, leadership yeah. man manager roles. Yeah. So that is constantly. And, and what I'm really proud to say is like, it's not only like we have a lot of openings uh, because we're, uh, it's, it's mainly driven because we're growing because uh, we have a really high retention around that. I I'm a, I actually want to share something with you because True. well, there's a is is one of the is one of the core positions in, inside the inside the mega factory. And two days ago, I was having a round table, and I normally I have this practice. Uh, I normally invite employees uh, to sit down with me in this conference room that you are, uh, and it's kind of like step take a step back. And, and have with them open conversations that are out of the business as usual. Yeah. And, and one of the questions that I asked is like, I was trying to get a sense of like, hey, do you like what you're doing? Do you like working at Tesla? And within that meeting, like five of those welders literally say like, this is by far the best company that I have had the opportunity to work here. And I asked a follow-up question because... Like, you're, you're the plant manager, maybe you're trying to make an impression, but why? Yeah. And it's something that really stick to me that it relates to the, like, to a, to a welder that is kind of like outside of the benefits and everything that Tesla offered. The welder say, like, this is the first time in my 25 years of experience as a welder that the only thing that I need to do to go to work is show up. As a welder, in all the areas that I have worked, it's like I work in environments that were disrespectful sometimes. But second, it's like the, the core job required me to required me to be carrying a lot of equipment mm. to go and do the job. Oh, I see. And in yeah. Tesla, is, he said, like, number one is super respectful. Um, number two is like, I just show up, do my job. And a lot of the, basically all the tools that I require to do the job are here and, wow. and Tesla is providing them. That's good. So, um, as far as wages, are you able to speak to that in terms of, obviously you have like skilled laborers, I guess you can call them, right? Skilled laborers, the, the welders, um, the assemblers, what have you. Um, and then you have, um, people at the executive level leadership roles. Um, what is the range of pay, for example, at the skilled labor force? And then also what is the range of pay that you guys offer, um, employees coming on board? Um, at the executive level, are you able to speak to that, or I'm not able to speak into the specifics? But what I what I can tell you, and and it's just like just like any uh, big company, and 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 actually Tesla does a really good job with this. Is like they are constantly assessing the market and ensuring that they are staying competitive uh, to basically being able to scale. And 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 there are important reasons on why you want to do that. Um, you you are going or a learning curve while you're trying to develop this new product. So it, the main challenge here is like, how quickly can we run? And if we spend the time training someone mm -hmm. and they basically leave the company just for a small amount of money because we don't stay com competitive, yeah. it's basically it's gonna hurt us more than, than actually ensuring that we pay fairly accord, according to the market to ensure that we can that we can ramp up this business. So uh, Tesla is not the type of company that is only like assessing um, like wages to your point or compensation yeah. uh, when the market demands. It's like it's, there is a an iteration that is constantly done and there is a team that is uh, fully dedicated to that, not only assessing at the type of work or the skill, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, how that compared to the to the MRP or, or, or the market to ensure that that we can retain our top talent and 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 continue uh, scaling the company. That's good. That's good. So, um, in terms in terms of skills, for example, the skilled labor force, uh, you mentioned 
I would say probably really the top two skills that anybody needs to come on uh, on board with Tesla is um, open to change and then also resiliency. What are some hard skills uh, that Tesla, at least the mega factor here in Lathrop, uh, what do you guys look for in terms of um, skills um, that you guys would look at and say, okay, this we need these set of skills. Um, what are some of those skills uh, that you guys look for? In terms of like type of roles, so or yeah, so for example, welder. Obviously, they're a welder. But what other, what other skills do you guys look for um, in terms of, for example, recruitment? So normally, our recruitment process is is robust. So um, the first thing is like multiple type of jobs that we have that are skilled is basically we have the production associate, you have process technicians, you have paint sprayers, you have uh, okay. welders you have uh, maintenance technicians and and so on but but basically you are looking for a specific leadership principles that are gonna adapt to the culture of mm -hmm. of tesla so so normally when you're assessing talent that is gonna come to the to the factories it's number one is like do they have the experience uh, on the specific job that that they are applying uh, number two is basically if they do have the experience you you want to try to assess if they will adapt to the culture that we're trying to to bring into the mega factory and and not only to the mega factories like tesla overall and and we talk about resilience uh, adapting to change like are they are they data driven uh, basically do they have are you able to create like follow-up questions in which you're able to sense if they are disciplined uh, if they are basically invested for the long run, if they yeah. care about what we're doing, and ensuring that we, we, we bring that top talent because Tesla is a company that a lot of people wants to work for. Yeah. And, and it's not easy to get into, into Tesla. Like there are multiple filters and, and managers that, that assess that talent because we want to take the time to ensure that people that we bring into Tesla is, is going to continue creating the culture that, that, we're, that we're cultivating. I was, um, a, a few months, I was uh, doing a recruiting event and, and one, of, uh, one of my colleagues from, from Nevada, he, he's actually managing the, the controls inge engineers there. Mm. He, he shared a story and he said, like, I applied for Tesla seven years. And he said, like, seven years, like, at least one or two times a year, I was applying for Tesla. Wow. And, and it, it took me time to understand like what were the things that they were looking for it took me time to understand how can i connect for the for the managers that were there and what they were trying to achieve and what critical technical skills that i needed to get and learn in order to get there because and what he was sharing like we were trying to recruit controls engineers at that point it's like mm. guys if, if you just show up and you say like hey this is what i learned at college and, and how can that fit probably it's not gonna make it it's like you need to investigate and you do your homework and reach out to people and understand what are the controls, logic, and languages that you are using and the equipment that you are basically installing right now. How can I practice it, yeah. those languages in order for me to be able to articulate correctly and get yeah. proficient at that? So uh, honestly, it, it requires uh, a lot of uh, experience and, and commitment uh, to, to get there to be able to be selected at this. So, what type of experience then are you guys? Do you guys look for? Um, it's depending on the role, right? Okay. Like, like, <laughs> give me a couple. Um, so, so for example, if you will be looking for a operations manager, okay. right? Um, you are you are looking at someone that number one has experience running a large operation because. Uh, you can you can have experience running a, a small business where you can wear kind of like all the hats and at the same time you can become like a kind of like a individual contributor where your team is is small. There is people that do a great job from that aspect, but when you're looking for people or bringing top talent that is gonna have those skills, but not only they need to have to do it, but they need to be the mentors of others to scale that at that magnitude. You rely on methodologies, mechanisms, like experience, leadership principles, core values. And some examples of those ones are like 
eh, Lean Manufacturing, yeah. eh, Six Sigma, the ability to communicate correctly, the ability to understand a mission, the ability to implement mechanisms. That's key. Um, anyone can can tell you like how to run an operation large yeah. scale, but probably not a lot of people can tell you like, hey, the mechanism is like, I run a tier one, two, and three at these levels. I'm looking for a daily accountability process. I'm looking for how to implement visual management. I'm looking for how to develop problem solving skills. What are the type of questions that I ask? And then as you are getting into the interviews and you ask follow-up questions, is basically you are trusting but verifying that actually they can walk that out. Filtering it out. Yep. How do you guys how do you guys weigh um, a prospect in terms of education versus experience? Um I think is at the end of the day is like I don't when I look at them it's like it's, it's more around, are they going to be able to do the job? And are they prepared to do it? So, education versus experience. Uh, well, I that's, think, that's tested through the series of questions. So, that you so it's, it's, it's mainly depending on the level, right? Like, if you were to interview me uh, yeah. seven years ago, I probably, my education didn't change, but my experience and the ability to operate at a specific level or my level of maturity was probably not there. But even within the within the roles that we have, there are there are there are different levels, right? We have a, a industrial engineer, senior industrial engineer, staff engineer. So there are multiple levels that they can scale. So so normally, even when we are having those recruiter events and you are looking for a particular role, a lot of times if you find a, someone that you were looking, you you, were, you you might be sourcing for a higher level role. But while going into the interview, you find someone that you say like, hey, this is someone that we can develop. And actually, we have an opening at a lower level. You have the conversation with the candidate and you're transparent. You say like, hey, I think you're playing for this role based on your knowledge and capabilities. I don't think you're at that level because of X, Y, Z. But I think you'll be great at this level and you will get the opportunity to enter. And definitely, we can develop that potential so you can there be there. Will you be willing to do it? And a lot of those like candidates, uh, they 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 give you the opportunity, and you can see the growth. But it it's a it's a give and take. And some others yeah. like just like any other company, uh, they are not successful at, at what they are doing. But uh, it it requires a lot of elements. And I I was an example of those type of processes. Like that's good. Not all the time in my career I applied for roles that I was qualified, yeah. and all the times I got the role that I was applying, but I was able to get to big companies at a different role and develop from within. Shoot for the stars and see where you land after that. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, so, obviously, the maker factory, you guys produce um, uh, utility-scale batteries here. Um, what other uh, types of work that you get, do you guys do in the city of Lake Dirt, period? I know you, guys, you mentioned uh, there's a warehouse that stores uh, a lot of the parts for the mega factory here. Um, is there any other operations that you guys do in the city of Lake Dirt period besides? So we have service. Uh, service. So we have a, a like right across the city there is a, the service uh, warehouse. Uh, yeah. So they, they are basically service for the vehicle business and as well for, for energy. Okay. Um, we have castings, which is by the Heartland Road. And, and basically, they, they do the castings and, and for Model S and, Mo, and Model X, okay. and mainly. For the uh, chassis? Yeah. And okay. then we have uh, the warehouse for the, for the mega factory, uh, where we basically bring all the parts and, and it's all the logistics around, around, around the parts that are, are part of the mega pack. Okay. And I'm not sure if you noticed it, but on the yard right here as well, we have a... Um, Inside the mega factory, um, uh, semi truck charging stations. I so, didn't see that. so when you, when you walk out, you're gonna uh. probably have the opportunity to see some some semi trucks that are charging there. So, okay. as as you know, uh, Tesla is expanding as well in that in that business, and 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 we're just like creating that uh, charging stations where customers and 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 Tesla trucks are are, are charging there as well. Got it. Uh, final question. So, is there as far as the mega factory uh, goes, I mean, that's, um, it sounds obviously like that's the biggest operations that you guys do here in the city of Lake, that's the mega factory. Um, you know, again, it's kind of looking to the future, looking down the line, for example. Um, 
do you guys have the footprint necessary to grow in the future or um, is there enough of a footprint where you guys could grow into um, in the future to expand your operations here in the city of Lathrop for the mega factory? I think the city of Lathrop uh, still has tons of potential to continue growing. And and I don't see a space as a constraint in the city of Lathrop. I think if you, if you drive down the street, yeah. you can see the amount of warehouses, uh, like world class warehouses that are yeah. that are getting uh, built there or yeah. or manufacturing buildings that they can become. Uh, one example is uh, where we store or 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 mega packs currently. Mm-hmm. That was not part of our or of initial plan or the or the or the land that that we had for the for the mega factory a okay. uh, glacier warehouse that's right uh, we just expand we just acquired that building last year mm-hmm. so we're as as business scales we're looking for 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 expansion and and the city of Lathrop is 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 a great opportunity why yeah again we already have businesses established we have a is, is Tesla is already well known by the community. We have the correct pipeline pipeline with the schools and and the labor that that is that is close to here, and I think we have the the right capabilities to to basically source for uh, technical jobs and as well engineering jobs and and I think just the sky is the limit for the for the city of Lathrop. That's good. That's good. So how many uh, when you guys when Tesla first came to Lathrop, do you? Uh, know how many buildings or facilities that um, it occupied at the time? Uh, I, I would lie. I, I, I was, I was probably, I was not part of that process. So, Got it. but I can definitely. How about now? How do you know how many facilities or how many buildings that Tesla um, operates here in the city? Yeah, those are the ones that I actually Number mentioned. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, what is that total count wise? Is that like? Four or five buildings, or what does that look like exactly? It's a, uh, it's six buildings. Six buildings. Mm-hmm. Got it. So no, no announcements that you can make in terms of uh, future business plans or expansion yet. No, if but if, but if when I'm ready, I'll be I'll be happy to give you a call and that's good and that's good. and share the the great news. Absolutely, yeah, we definitely love to come back. Um, well, thank you for coming uh, coming on the podcast. Um, any. Any final thoughts or anything uh, that you'd like to share uh, with our audience in Lathrop or even really, really to the world at large for that matter? Uh, any final thoughts? I will say, first of all, thank you for, for giving us this space. Uh, I think it was a great conversation. You are super approachable. And, okay. and I first time doing a podcast, uh, so I hope I, I pass based yeah. on your standards. <laughs> yeah. but, but overall... Um, the message that I want to leave to the to the audience is like, uh, don't put limits to your professional development and personal development. Uh, there are there are a lot of opportunities uh, to get developed to continue growing in the city of Lathrop, and not only at the city of Lathrop, but but in general overall. Uh, yeah. And I want to highlight Tesla uh, has give give me the opportunity to work. It's a it's a great employer. By far, is a company that I have experienced the highest amount of innovation. But what is more important, I am enjoying every single minute that I'm that I'm working in this company. Uh, despite of what are the challenges, uh, it's like it's it's just like feel. I feel the motivation every time that I show up, uh, and we work in the energy business for Tesla, so <laughs> we always gotta keep that that high energy yeah, that, that is gonna energy. keep the the people moving because. What is really important is what people feel from you. So yeah. to me, that's that's energy, and and I want to make sure that uh, that's what we project, and not only uh, personally, but but within Tesla, and and looking forward for a for a second podcast. Hopefully, the next Absolutely. time that we get together, we we're able to talk about new buildings and and, and how much have we grown, uh, you know, really achieved that those forty gigawatt hours. Absolutely, you no, know, we appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, uh, next time, definitely look forward to the opportunity, even. Uh, Freelon must have come down to live the late. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, again, if you found value in this uh, episode today, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, uh, share this video. Uh, there will definitely be more, many more, many more great episodes like this that we'll definitely uh, showcase uh, to you guys for the city of Lathrop. Um, 
Until next time, take care. And thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Thank, Thank you. you.